I spent a, a number of days in my youth working on houses. I learned to paint as a kid on rentals that my father managed and in high school. I scraped drywall mud off floors in large housing developments all over the San Francisco Bay area. But it was while working construction on the summer break from college that I was first introduced to home bottles. They're kind of cool looking, shaped like a rounded metal spearhead attached to a string on the non pointy end. Like all plumb bobs, we hung ours up high so gravity would draw the string to a perfectly straight vertical line with the point of the bob showing the spot for exact alignment on the floor or ground. And that perfect line and point allowed us to determine whether a wall or a fence was straight up and down or not. As simple as they are, home bobs are ingenious and they've been around for a long, long time. Venus and his audience some 2,700 years ago had them. And they weren't the same back then, showing a true vertical line. And a plumb wall measures up to that line, and now the plumb wall does not. The importance of a wall being plumb cannot be overstressed. One wall out of kilter can cause some or even the rest of the building to be out of line. And it's not just cosmetic alone. Bearing wall out of plumb risks the safety of an entire building. Our lectionary reading today starts with Amos' description of a vision of God holding a plumb claiming it will be set alongside God's people to determine if they measure up. An idea, of course, is to not literally see that people are standing ramp, rod, vertical. Rather, whether their conduct is in line with God's will. Do they measure up? Do they align where God points them and, and us toward? Are we, as individuals, out of kilter? Is a part of the inquiry, but the inquiry in Amos, like much of the Bible, also addresses whether a people, their nation, their corporate way of living in community measures up. Amos, using the clever image of missing the mark, the plumb bob shows makes the same point that the word sin makes. Sin harkens from an archery term meaning to miss the mark. Do we miss the mark God aims us at? are the test questions raised by the plumb, mob, and archery metaphors. And the verses before our lesson set out a plumb line for Israel. They state the mark God aims humans and their institutions at. Amos dangles before us the straight plumb line that God has for all nations who seek God's way and God's blessing and how to avoid the consequences that flow from not measuring up. Amos 5 itself lays out what Israel and all of God's people are being measured up against. Chapter 5, verses 14 15 provides that we are to seek good and not evil. Hate evil and love good and establish justice. More famously at Amos 5, 24, the prophet goes on to say, let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And Amos points out that worship songs and offerings are despised by God if justice and righteousness are not happening as a result. Earlier, the prophet also gives examples of how God knows justice and righteousness are not happening. Specific examples. In chapter 2 and chapter 5, Amos lists among the unjust and unrighteous transgressions these that I'm reading excerpts from paraphrase called the message. They buy and sell upstanding people. People for them are only things, ways of making money. They sell a poor man for a pair of shoes. They sell their own grandmother. They grind the penniless into dirt, shove the luckless into a ditch. Stuff they've extorted from the poor is piled up at the shrine of their god while they sit around drinking wine they've conned from their victims. They made the youth in training bring and told the young prophets don't prophets. They run rasha over the poor and take the bread right out of their mouths. They bully right living people, taking bribes right and left and kicking the poor when they're down. Those 
upline issues are not about how people worship and believe, but how we act. God's primary measurements of, of our outer calmness are oppressive tongue and inattention to the care of others. Oppressing and uncaring is how we become way out of plumb line with God. God's people are called to let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That's how we build a straight and plumb society. And our lesson hones in on that. Amos traveled up from the southern kingdom of Judah, prophesied in the northern kingdom of Israel. He speaks to Israel's people, its kingdom, and its head priest. And quite telling you heard in the verses that Charlotte read so well, that the king and the high priest consider the sacred space of Bethel of the temple as belonging to the king, not to God. Amaziah said to Amos, Oh, seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the king. And of course, therein lies the problem, the very crux of it. And holy things and holy people and holy ways are bent to the will of secular and religious leaders who give allegiance to earthly power over heavenly power. Things go awry. Conduct is unholy, and there are unholy consequences. Unholy and awry parts are justice, not being provided and righteousness being thwarted. This is what oppressive and uncaring people and leaders mean to. And the consequence is not just injustice and unrighteousness or oppression and careless or there is this tsunami ripple effect that swamp cultures and individuals with trouble. Amos prophesies the come up and so not constructing self and community in line with God. The good news is that Amos also teaches that lives and nations constructed God's way are plumb and solid and as a consequence will withstand the calamities of life. In Matthew 7, the part I read in the invocation, Jesus teaches this lesson as well. Also using a construction method. And just pointed out the golden rule. In everything due to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Jesus goes on to point out that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown on the fire. And then adds this famous illustration. Everyone that who hears these words of mine and acts in them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it was founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act in them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. The rains fell and the floods came the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was its fall. See them. The golden rule is shorthand for what is to everyone from everyone, including most especially nations and their leaders. It's Jesus' way of expressing the plum line. Do to others what you want done for yourself results in justice, results in righteousness. And the golden rule in one form or another is a part of almost every religion. It is known to universally create a chance and righteous people. All the transgressions that Enos mentions in his book are violations of that rule. Slavery, mistreating those worse off, conning victims, shutting down prophets, not tending to the poor, bribing and bullying. We do not want to experience those things. And so we should not impose them on others as one person, or as a part of a community, or a nation. When we treat people as, when we people treat others as they want to be treated, justice and righteousness occur. When the institution treats everyone as we want to be treated, justice and righteousness occur. When we don't provide the treatment, we are out of pump and out of pump people and institutions.
two-shoes, humble guy. And the last half of the lesson today ends with Amos describing how the institutional priest out upon behavior results in personal and corporate calamities. His wife is forced into prostitution. His children die violently. His land is taken. He is captured and exiled and dies far from Israel. And it's not just him and his family who suffer. Israel will suffer violence and war, conquest, and exile, which sure enough happens to the Babylonian conquest. The book of Amos details how to plumb behavior, to be just and righteous. It also details the consequences of transgressions of injustice and unrighteous behavior. The consequences are that out of Palm's walls, big and small, eventually all fall. Or as Jesus put it, houses built on sand collapse. What is upon the anus and rock solid to Jesus is justice and righteousness summed up by Jesus in every religion in the golden rule. That easy to remember who allows us and God to determine whether our living individually and collectively is in line with God or not. It's easy in the sense that all we have to do is ask two questions. Am I treating others as I would want to be treated? Is my community, its leaders and institution, treating others as I would want to be treated? Had Amos' audience asked those questions, would they have wanted to be put into slavery or mistreated or conned or denied the right to prophecy or not to be tended to in war or have bribes dictate government or be bullied? And the answer, of course, is that no person in their right mind would want any of those things done to them. And so they needed to plumb their conduct alone and together to that line and to do to others as they want done to themselves. And if it's a fair question to ask those in Amos' time, it's a fair question to ask in our time. That's the point to the reading, to push us to measure our own construction. Are we personally plumb the God's measuring line? Are our leaders and institutions plumb the God's measuring line? Would we want to be treated the way they and we treat each other and others? Are we individually and collectively out of the plumb with a golden rule? Or to put it in Amos' wording, are we letting justice fall down like waters? Unrighteousness like an ever flowing stream. And there's a lot going on in the news that we should measure against us. Are we treating veterans, soldiers, police, and other people in uniforms, people of color, children, families, LGBTQ, Republicans, Democrats, political opponents, the poor, the sick, in prison, or the aliens among us like we would want to be treated. And if we are not, our construction is out of plumb with God's measurement and aim, and we can be sure that there will be consequences. Jesus clearly states every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the good news is that Jesus also lets us know what a good tree's fruit look like. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. And then the prophet Amos would agree. We, and we agree and act for a well-constructed self, the community.